Welcome back to the channel. This is the Volkswagen Amarok Aventura, which in Spanish means adventure. Uh, there's nothing Spanish about this beach here today. It's Dolly Mount, it's Dublin, and it's October, but it's not raining. So this is a crew cab. It's a commercial vehicle. It will do all the jobs you need to do and then actually take passengers with you for convenience. Uh, I'll give you the starting price on them, what it's like on the road, the V6 engine that's underneath this, what's it like, off-road capabilities, everything coming up in this video. So hit subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, and we're going to take a look at the VW Amarok. At mid 60,000 euros, this version of the Amarok isn't exactly cheap. But you can get one in Comfortline and Highline from about 40,000 euro, and all those prices include VAT, which you can get rid of if you're using it for business. And that's something this thing can do in its sleep it can get you to work it can carry tools and this massive boot but it can also carry passengers it goes like an absolute rocket ship for the size of it and in this video you're going to find out all about those things can you live with it as a day-to-day -day vehicle what's it like to drive is, is it cumbersome and clunky and do you feel the size on the road or is it actually very easy to live with now before we jump into the main part of the car give you a look around this bit is absolutely crucial in a car like this so the boot is massive this thing slides forward gives you all the space and things people were asking about this this car when they saw it on social media was can you lock this area yes you can so i mean i don't know if i leave tools in it all the time but you can definitely cover things and lock them away and they're out of sight and there's tons of room here for everything and kids can jump on top and they can have lots of fun but it's a great option to have and it's simple to lock it and it's just done with the rest of the car there's good clearance from the wheels uh, the car itself can tow almost three and a half tons and it can actually carry, I think it's 1.6 tons on the back uh, if you can securely get something onto that. So it's got a lot of functionality in terms of what it can carry and what it can tow and that's going to be uh, of interest to people who, who might need it for that reason. Uh, there are some alternatives, I think the Toyotas and some of the, the cars, other things in the class can carry slightly higher uh, loads but will they feel as good as this and will they have the V6 engine? Probably not. So when you jump at the back, you go on and go, this is like a golf or something. They've intentionally left lots of the interior of this car to feel like a normal car. And more about that when you're driving later on. Now leg room, it's not the biggest, right? But you will fit child seats in the back here. I've done that. And just here in terms of your knees, it's a little bit cozy. The head height is pretty decent though. And you're kind of sitting in a fairly upright position from the seats. But you do get a seatbelt for your middle passenger. There's no armrest to speak of. There's a little 12 volt charger down here. There's no USB and there's drinks holders. And like how the seats come up mean that there's, there's quite a bit of space for your feet, but just unless your front seat passenger is quite a bit forward, which this one, for example, is, and leg room is pretty de decent. But then it's just when you have a, someone behind the driver, it's gonna be a little bit cozy, but it's all right. And then up here you have little halogen style bulbs a little bit old school looking and certainly in the dark uh, when they're on it, it all feels very yellow but they light the car up that's the job and there's grab handles here for when things get a little bit bumpy and another normal grab handle here so all is good in the back there's an electric window uh, there's even a door bin which is generous enough down here so it's all good now let's take a look at the front of the amarok and see what it's like up there where things get even more nice and car like if you have the sills on the side of it and they're dirty, they're gonna catch on the back of your trousers if you're a proper work tradesperson. Probably not an issue for you, but just when you're using it at weekends. Now, in here, it feels quite like a car. You get a steering wheel that's straight out of a Golf. It's the older style radio and nav and app connect system that they use. And the screen is pretty small. Like for such a big vehicle, it's strange to have such a small screen. You've got your heated seat controls. There's an old style proper handbrake, a massive, well, Massive lids, but under here it's kind of all right and normal. Little ashtray style holder for things in there. But actually it doesn't go right across the width of that because the handbrake is there. And seats are really comfortable. These have leg extenders on them. They're leather, they feel soft and they're heated as I mentioned, so it's nice. And up here there's things for holding your glasses. So the, it, it doesn't feel like a van. There's, there is lux luxury in it, but here, scratchy. Here, scratchy. It's all scratchy, but with that in mind, if it is gonna be used for work and there's gonna be dust and muck, and you wanna be able to wipe that, so I don't think it should be soft. There's a storage area up here, 12 volt chargers all over the shop, another one down here. There's one USB down here and an auxiliary input as well. And 
you know, there's, there's the same functional things that you get in most Volkswagens, like the control for the wing mirrors uh, to make them automatically fold in and stuff. Another thing that's very strange about this, for the size of it again, the size of the glove box is absolutely tiny. So if you take out even the owner's manual, that's it. You're not, you're not fitting, you're not fitting a toolbox in there. Put it that way. And uh, you barely fit the owner's manual. But you quickly, in some ways, forget that you're driving such a big vehicle because it's all centered around the driver and the climate controls, everything. It's like, oh, I've seen this before. So overall, it's all good. Don't mind the plastic. It probably should be like that anyway. One of my favorite things about the Amarok is the high beams up here. They're absolutely blinding. When you put them on at night time or you need to flash somebody in traffic, you cannot but get their attention. But that thing is the power to light up entire fields if you potentially were shooting rabbits or something off the back of this car, which I'm, I imagine a lot of Amroks will never be used for. We have nearly 600 newton meters of torque on tap. We've nearly 260 brake horsepower from this V6 engine. Yes, it is a matte finish from the factory. There are some of the questions people have asked me about the Amarok and let's now go for a spin. First thing about it that never gets old is how it sounds. So there's none of that diesel rattle going on. It actually sounds like a big beefy diesel engined beast. Can I say beast enough? It is though. So in off-road mode, it feels naturally at home. And although you're getting bumps from the surface that you're expecting, it's actually can in some ways be bumpier when you're on the road, normal road, and normal bumps that shouldn't cause it any problems actually make it a little bit clunky. So as we're heading towards lots of splashes here, <laughs> you know, how often do you get to do this? What, what other road-going car and do that, it is just unbelievable. The stuff this thing can do. You can take it off road, eats floods for breakfast, absolute breakfast. And then you get on smooth uh, territory and it's just like, it's just like driving a car. that has loads and loads of power. And then it's nice and calm and it's just plodding along. It's not even particularly noisy. And then you floor it like that and you get this massive diesel grunt. The only type of grunt you can get from a diesel is when it has a V6 engine to go with it and just completes the whole package. I like the way there is an off-road button but there's no low settings or changing uh, differential locks or any of that stuff. You just, if you want to go off-road, there's a button, you hold it down. The same way as you do with a traction button and off it goes. Um, and then from a driving point of view, you are higher up, but it doesn't really seem like it's no different to driving maybe uh, from the height point of view, a, a Touareg or, or something like that. Uh, all the switches feel very, very familiar, but even a little small ramp like that, you feel that shudder throughout the whole cabin. Whereas, you know, it, it, it doesn't make sense. You, you would imagine it with cruise. And then on the M50 and the motorway stuff like that, where I've, where I've had the Amarok, it just wafts along. It's like really soft and comfortable. It's like it's on an air suspension. So it's, it kind of deals with different road surfaces in, in different ways for whatever reason. As I mentioned, you're at almost 260 brake horsepower. So much torque. This thing uh, propels to 60 in, it says seven seconds, seven something. I don't believe it. I think it's quicker. Fuel economy wise, 10.3 litres per 100 kilometres, which is about 28 uh, UK miles per gallon if you're watching in the UK. Which, yeah, for a diesel, no doubt about it, that is uh, on the thirsty side. But again, the size of the thing, you know, you've got to factor it in. And I have been enjoying the power um, whenever I can. So also worth bearing in mind. You'll probably see it under the tens, but I, you know, you're not going to see six litres per 100 kilometres. It's an eight speed gearbox. Some other competitors, such as the Ford uh, have 10. It's not quite uh, the dual clutch system that they have in, in mainstream cars, but still very, very quick. Changes gear quickly, and before you know it, you're in you know eighth gear, cruising along, saving as much fuel. And there's paddles as well, should you want to use them.
on the road, I mean, it will go around corners. You're not going to hammer corners out of it and, and not feel like it's wobbling a little bit. But compared to a lot of competitors, again, some other uh, pickups, I've seen online that it, it does do reasonably well in that department. So things like this road surface that's changing all the time, it's a bit, it's a bit jumpy, it's a bit, you know, prefers smoother roads or then it's totally at home at the proper off-road stuff. But this kind of middle ground, it's not too sure. But the best thing about it is, to sum up, is the many different lives it has, the many different uses it has, there's three full passenger seat belts in the back. Rear legroom, as I mentioned, is a little bit cramped depending on who needs the legroom up front. But overall, it's a car that could get you to work during the week and then cover family life and all the stuff that brings with it at the weekends. And it's one of those cars that I think if you won the lotto, just for the crack, you'd have to have in the garage because when it snows, when you want fun, when it's flooded, it just, it ticks all those boxes. And you know, for those Jesus grab handles in the back and all over the vehicle alone, I mean, it's worth the price for that. And don't forget the VAT reduction that you can apply. And there's, all, there's, there's loopholes. If you're looking at one of these and the main competitors, don't skip over the AMROC. You've got to have a look at it. And if you can get uh, the Aventura option, well then, I'm jealous. Can I come around to your house sometimes? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Nobby on Cars. And hit subscribe, please do, if you haven't already. See you next time.